been receiving a lot of questions about wheat berries, so today is going to be all about wheat berries FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions. Hi, sweet friends. I'm Mary, and welcome to Mary's Nest. I'm a former New York City girl, now living the simple life with my husband here in the Texas Hill Country. And this channel is all about cooking from scratch, living naturally, and creating a cozy home with charming thrift store finds. So if you're like me and you want to live the simple life, subscribe to my channel and be sure to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. In a number of my videos, I use whole grains, the actual grain, not flour. And in one of the videos where I soak and sprout them and then make sprouted whole grain flour, I received a lot of questions about what type of whole grains to use, where can I get them, so on and so forth. And then when I did my videos about the blender batters, I received even more questions because the blender batters also use the whole grain, not the flour. And I received the same sorts of questions. Uh, what type of uh, grains should I use? Uh, where do I get them? So on and so forth. And so today I want to go over wheat berries. Now there are all sorts of grains, but today I'm just going to focus on those that are in the wheat family. And the first one that I want to talk about that you may have heard of because it's really gained in popularity, it's called einkorn. And it's a very, it's a very small grain, as you'll see. And it's the original wheat. You may hear it referred to as an ancient grain. And einkorn is the original ancient grain. Now it sounds like corn, but it has nothing to do with corn. It's actually spelt, and I think I wrote everything down here, and I hope I wrote it down right. I think it's E-I-N-K-O-R-N. And as you see, it's a very, very small, very small wheat berry, einkorn berry, and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful grain because it's an ancient grain. It's not been hybridized, and scientists say that the wheat that we have today, the modern wheat, has been hybridized so much that that's what can sometimes cause digestive problems for people. And when they go back to using the ancient grains, like einkorn, they seem to be able to digest it better. I'm not a scientist. I don't know for sure. That's certainly something worth looking into if you have trouble with grains. But I just wanted to mention that. So einkorn is wonderful to bake with. But because it's relatively low in gluten, now no wheat berry is gluten free, but it's lower in gluten than some of the hybridized uh, modern day wheats. And so if you bake with 100% einkorn, you may not see the same rise that you would get with other whole grains, but you'll still bake a wonderful bread. And actually, Baking with einkorn when you turn it into a sourdough really produces a lovely loaf of bread. Now the next grain, as we move up the grain timeline, so to speak, is emmer. Now you may also hear this referred to as farro. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about farro as we go forward in this discussion. But emmer is also an ancient grain, and it's quite a bit bigger, if you'll, you'll notice, than the... Um, the einkorn, and farro is very tasty. And you can certainly grind this and uh, make bread out of it, uh, but it also makes a wonderful grain to just cook up like you would rice and eat and toss it with some butter. It's delicious and it's very good for you. And again, um, because it's an ancient grain, uh, for some people who have difficulty digesting grains, it may be a little easier to digest. So when you're shopping for this particular grain, you may see it marketed as farro, F-A-R-R-O, or you may see it called emmer, E-M-M-E-R. In the United States for a long time, we called this emmer. But now I notice at the grocery stores, you're seeing it referred to more in the European fashion as farro. And again, as we continue up the uh, whole grain timeline, the wheat berry timeline, uh, we come to spelt. And spelt is also a wonderful grain. You'll notice it's a little darker, a little darker than, than the farro, the emmer, um, but a, a little bigger, we're about the same size almost. And spelt makes a wonderful, uh, wonderful grain for baking bread. And again, because it's an ancient grain, 
it can often be better digested than some of your more modern uh, wheat uh, variations. And I love spelt. Uh, I usually bake with spelt with pretty much everything I make. I really enjoy it. And I find that it's tasty, it's flavorful. You get a good rise when you make a bread with it, uh, a little better uh, than, than you do with the einkorn. Uh, it works well with yeast, it works well with sourdough. It's great uh, with cookies and uh, quick breads, muffins. Spelt, I find, is just terrific. And I highly recommend it. Now something I want to share that I think is kind of interesting about ancient grains. Although I was referring to this as farro, and as I said, we often call it here in the United States, emmer, all three of these are actually farro. They're all in the farro family. <laughs> and einkorn is often referred to as farro piccolo, little, and emmer is often referred to as farro medio, medium. And, and although I do find it interesting because the, the spelt and the, and the farro or the emmer are pretty similar in size, but in any event, uh, and spelt is referred to as farro grande, the big one. So that's, it's just kind of cute to know that they're actually all in the farro family. So that's an overview of your ancient grains, your ancient wheat berries specifically. Now, some of you have asked me where to get these, and that can be a challenge. I, I won't lie. Uh, finding einkorn in the store isn't always easy, especially the whole uh, einkorn berry. Uh, you might find some einkorn flour, but generally where I live here in the hill country, I've only seen it at, uh, when I go into Austin, to Whole Foods. I've not seen it at my local grocery store, neither the grain nor the flour. So if you want to try baking with the flour, you'll probably have to find a specialty grocery store. However, if you want to locate the grain, you may find it at a specialty store. It is, it's becoming a little more common, but, but I haven't seen it, but you know, maybe in larger cities and whatnot. Um, but you can order it online. And there are a number of places that sell einkorn grain. And I'll put links in the description below so that you can uh, locate them and find them and see what you think. Now, Faro uh, or emmer might be easier to find uh, in the section of your grocery store that sells like rice and grains that you cook to eat. You might see it on the shelf if, you know, uh, what is it, uh, quinoa has become very popular and you'll see that sort of in the, ra the rice uh, aisle. Uh, you uh, might also see faro there. So that's one option of a place to find it. I've never seen uh, faro in the baked goods section, you know, where they sell the bake the uh, flowers and whatnot, neither as a whole grain nor sold as a flour. But I have seen it at the grocery store, as I said, uh, in uh, packages, you know, to, to serve, you know, as a side dish like rice. So that's uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. And the whole grains like this, I've also seen in bulk bins uh, at the Whole Foods in Austin. So I would imagine that they have that uh, pretty much any Whole Foods. Now spelt is a little more common to bake with and you see a lot more recipes and cookbooks, but I have never seen spelt flour nor whole spelt grain at my local grocery store. And it's a pretty good grocery store. Uh, and I've even had trouble when I've gone, as I said, you know, into Austin uh, to find this at Whole Foods. Um, I I can't recall finding it there either. Now I have seen spelt flour at Whole Foods and I've also seen sprouted spelt flour at Whole Foods. And we'll talk about sprouting in a minute. Uh, but again, uh, I usually, when it comes to the actual spelt berry, I usually order these online. And again, I'll put links in the description below so you can check that out and learn about ordering spelt online. Now any of these wheat berries, the ancient wheat berries or the modern ones we're going to talk about in a minute, can also be not they well they can also they can be ground of course and made into flour, but they can also be soaked and sprouted and then dried 
and then ground up into flour. So then you have your own homemade sprouted flour. And I'll put a link in the I cards um, above and I'll also put it in the description below and uh, to a video that I have where I show how to go through that whole process of soaking, sprouting, drying, and then grinding, uh, it, grinding it into flour so that you have your own homemade sprouted flour. Now next we're gonna move up the grain timeline, the wheat fairy timeline, to uh, more modern wheats. And these are hard red wheat berries. This is hard red wheat. And this is what you normally hear referred to as whole wheat. When you buy whole wheat flour at your grocery store, it's usually hard red wheat that's been ground into flour. And in terms of finding the uh, actual wheat berry, I've not had any trouble. I've seen it in the bulk bins at my grocery store. I've seen it at the bulk bins at Whole Foods. So this is certainly something that you can uh, easily find to bake with. And then you can uh, grind it at home uh, if you have a grain mill. I have a um, mock mill and I love it. And I have a video showing where I unboxed it and I ground some grain with it. And I use it in some of the videos uh, that I made where I grind grain. And it's very affordable. I'll put a link to that in the description below too. And that's why, why I purchased it. It's a very high quality German made uh, grain mill, but it's very reasonable compared to a, a lot of the ones that you see on the market. Now, uh, I've also understood that um, you can use, if you have one of those high-speed blenders like a Vitamix, you can uh, grind your grain in those. And my girlfriend gave me an interesting tip that she shared with me. She uses a Vitamix to grind her grain, but she puts, it, she puts her grain in the freezer before she grinds it in the, grain, in the Vitamix to uh, keep the temperature cold and keep it from getting too hot. Because that's the thing, uh, grain mills or good quality grain mills are made to grind the grain usually between two stones, like they make it stone ground as they say, and to do it at a pace that will grind it to the consistency that you want, but at the same time not overheat it because you don't want to damage the oils in the grain and then make it rancid. So her tip is with a high-speed blender, uh, freeze your grain and then grind it. I thought that was very clever. So that's hard red wheat. So that's a easy to find and easy to bake with. Uh, you know, it does anything whole wheat, you know, as those of you who may have baked with whole wheat, uh, it does, you know, create a slightly denser uh, bread, as do all the, the whole grains, uh, than if you were just using all purpose flour or bread flour that have basically, you know, had the, the bran and the germ and so on and so forth removed from them. And I have to tell you something funny. Uh, my aunt in Italy came to the United States and she was visiting with us and uh, we had some wheat germ which is the what's been removed you know uh, from the the wheat that then they make white flour out of um, but they used to sell it, and I think they still do it, uh, that you can add to cereal or baked goods or whatever the case may be and my mother was trying to explain to her, oh, sprinkle this on your cereal, it's wheat germ. And it was so cute because there's a little something lost in the translation. And she kept saying, no, thank you, I don't want any germs. <laughs> so now you know, hard red wheat, 100% whole wheat, uh, and easy to find. Now, next, going up the, the grain, whole wheat berry timeline, we have hard white wheat. And this, you can see, it's similar in shape to the, the hard red wheat, but it's lighter in color. And this is basically just a variation, only I guess some hybrid, I don't know if that's 100% the correct word, but it's, it's just a, a variation on hard red wheat. And what uh, agronomists, I guess, or the people that do these sorts of things, uh, bred this, to be a lighter colored wheat, however, to still retain basically the same nutrition as the hard red wheat. And then what happens is when you bake with hard white wheat, your bread will be lighter, not only in texture, 
but in color. And it's often a nice transition for people who are new to whole grains. So especially if you're in a family where you're trying to wean your children you know, off of um, more processed breads and you want to get them eating more whole grain breads, baking with uh, hard white wheat can make for a nice transition. And it does, <laughs> they're falling around here, uh, it does make a very lovely bread. Now, finding the actual whole grain may be more difficult, but I have seen even in my grocery store that uh, selling um, uh, hard white wheat, and it'll just say white whole wheat, just like the hard red wheat will just say whole wheat, this will say white whole wheat. And sometimes people get confused because they're like, white whole wheat? What is that, white flour? And it's not at all. It's actually 100% a, a whole grain. It's just a variation, and it was made uh, by the agronomist to be lighter in texture and color and so on and so forth. And uh, I usually see I'm trying to think. I think it might just be sold at my grocery store under the King Arthur brand, but there may be other brands. Um, so that is definitely something to look for and to try your hand baking with. And now if you want the actual grain, I have never seen this sold in the stores, neither uh, in my local grocery store or even in the specialty type stores like Whole Foods. So I have ordered this online, and again, I'll put uh, links below so in, in case you wanna find the actual grain to grind yourself. But you should be able to find the white whole wheat flour, mind you, uh, you know, in the five pound bag at your grocery store. So that's a basic overview of wheat berries. So you've got your, your einkorn or your farro piccolo, you've got your emmer, or your farro medio, or you've got your spelt, your farro grande, or for more modern, those are your ancients, for more modern choices, you've got your hard red wheat, and you've got your hard white wheat. Now, you may have also heard of soft wheat, and the one that you may see uh, sold is soft white wheat. I, I believe it's white wheat, I don't think it's a red wheat. I do not have any soft white wheat berries. They're very difficult to find. Uh, I think I've tried uh, searching for them online. I may have to be a little more diligent, but I do not have any. But you, and I've not seen it sold at my grocery store. And if you do see it, it will be sold under the name of whole wheat pastry flour. Now, the difference between hard wheat and soft wheat really I think has basically something to do with what time of year it's grown and so on and so forth. But the nice thing about soft wheat and specifically a whole wheat, uh, soft wheat or whole wheat pastry flour, it bakes up quite nicely, even a little better than the uh, hard white wheat. It's very good if you want to make pastries out of whole grains or a pie crust. Uh, so if you're looking to bake like that, search around for a whole wheat pastry flour. I have not seen it at my local grocery store. The only place that I have seen it is at specialty grocery stores like Whole Foods and of course online. But, uh, and it's usually sold in a little smaller, I think what's that, about a two pound or is it two and a half pound, those little smaller bags of flour. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that if you want to uh, try your hand at uh, using the whole wheat pastry flour. Uh, if you're familiar with baking um, with uh, soft white wheat flours that are like the all-purpose variety that are just white, you may uh, be familiar with them like you'll hear them referred to as like cake flour. Uh, I know sometimes my mother would use uh, Swan's Down. I don't know if that brand is still around. And I think, um, is it White Lily? I'm not sure. You have to leave in the comments below. This is very uh, Southern. And as I shared with you, you know, <laughs> I'm a New York City girl originally. But I understand that a lot of Southern bakers really liked using those soft white wheats to make very light and fluffy cakes and beautiful angel biscuits, I think as they're called and whatnot. So, but in any event, getting back to whole grains, uh, look for whole wheat pastry flour. Um, I think it might be a little hard to find the soft white uh, wheat or the soft wheat berries, but at least you can give your hand at baking with uh, whole wheat pastry flour.
Now this villa over here is not a wheat berry, but I just wanted to show this to you. This is rye grain, and you'll see it almost has almost a little bit of a greenish tint to it. But the reason that I wanted to show you rye berries in case you've never seen them is because they all, you know, also are used quite often to bake bread. And if you go with 100% uh, rye flour. Uh, it's going to be those nice, dense, chewy uh, German type breads. Uh, but you can also uh, soak this and sprout it and dry it and make sprouted rye flour, which will also still make a, a dense bread, uh, but uh, makes things more digestible. Oh, that's what I wanted to mention because you may be wondering why I'm talking about soaking and sprouting and drying grain and then making sprouted flour is um, sprouted flour. Uh, when it's made into breads is often easier to digest than uh, bread made with grains that have not been sprouted. Uh, it's just, you're just sort of extending the levels of, of digestion uh, that the human body can work on. And so you're making it easier for the human body to digest the grain if you've done some of the digesting process of soaking, sprouting, drying, so on and so forth. And so that's, that's why I, I talk about it. And I like to, to, I like to do that a lot because I find that uh, sprouted flowers really agree with, with my family. So that's, that's your rye grain. And you can mix it with any of these uh, wheat berries. Uh, you can bake with it completely on its own. Uh, another thing is, the nice thing about um, having whole grains, and if you do grind them up yourself, you can use a little sifter. You can grind them uh, coarsely on a coarse setting, and then you can use a sifter to sift out a little bit of the bran and the germ, which they were doing this back in the Middle Ages. And it's still nutritious. You're still, you're only maybe sifting out about a quarter of it. And so you've still got a lot of nutrition left in your flour, but it does help make a slightly lighter, less dense bread. And that's a very good thing to do if you bake with rye, because rye can, 100% rye bread can be a little dense. But if you grind your own grain and then sift out uh, some of the germ and the bran and then bake with it, you'll get a nice little, uh, little bit of a lighter rye. And you can do that with, with any of uh, these wheat berries and basically with any grain that you would grind yourself. Well, let me know if you have any more questions about wheat berries. And in the interim, subscribe to my channel and click on this video over here where I answer all your questions about bone broth. Love and God bless.